I just feel like as a linebacker, you gotta have some type of look about you. Like, it, I don't really respect linebacker. They come in with a skinny neck. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I'm just telling. Same way how you look at them receivers, and you be like, "Oh, his dress cold off." Yeah, I'm with Ain't you. Ain't no way you gonna catch a ball on me. No gloves. Like, bro, it's, uh, who is it? he's so trash. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Peanut Tillman, and this is the NFL Players Second Acts Podcast. And I got my guy Rome with me. He cold, but he don't want to put a coat on. He committed to that outfit right now. I'm committed to the fashion. <laughs> I cold guess, and everything. I guess you have given me that, that coined that. I'm committed to the outfit today. And yes, it, it is freezing in here. But first and foremost, let's get all the, you know, get all the little things out of the way first. For all our viewers, listeners, wherever you're tuned into right now, make sure you give us a five-star rating. Uh, hit, give us a follow, give us a comment, like, and share wherever you pick up your podcast at, whether it's iHeart or Apple Podcasts. So thank you, Peanut. Introduce our guest today. Hey, we got a we got a, a, a good duet with us right now. We got uh, two two great NFL legends, uh, two time Reds, the Kale Spikes. They're uh, phenomenal people. They have their own podcast right now, Behind the Mask. Welcome them to the show, gentlemen. What's up, man? What's <laughs> Finally, you know, we I'm, get a chance to come in here. You know, I'm, I'm really excited. With the board. I, I'm really excited. Uh, number one, uh, Tutin, your your real name is Tutin Common. Tutin Common, yes, yes, indeed. Which is to me, I don't, I don't think enough people understand that. How does that, how does that come about? Yeah. Uh, please explain that because I have the name Roman and I have to explain that sometimes. Absolutely. So uh, my mother and my aunt went to the King Tut exhibit back in '77 in New York. And um, they were so intrigued by it. They said the first male child in the family is gonna be named after King Tut. So I got Tutan Common as my name. Uh, my father's from Honduras, so last name is Reyes. So it's kind of play on, on words as well as King of Kings. And nice. um, my, my, my cousin was born like 10 years later and his name is Terrence. So he got the easy name. So I'm the one that had to try to, you know, second grade. First grade tough. You know how it goes when they, first day of class, like I'm like, here. <laughs> so, yeah, man. But I love it, man. It's unique. And, and what I always say is you'll never meet another person with the name Tutankhamen. Common. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So, okay, Peanuts. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so, tell, tell, talk, let's talk about this, too, because you guys have a great podcast. And you guys talk ball. You talk other things as well. But the thing I'm really intrigued is that both of you guys are already retired. And now this podcast space is kind of taken off. And so now you guys have kind of been out of the picture for out of the fold for a while. And now you're jumping back in. How do you go about continue to jump back in and creating and like developing your own space in this huge space where it's obviously competitive hmm. and it's obvious like you're not a starting quarterback that just retired, but you guys do have leverage. You do have a lot of plays and your name does carry itself. Um. I was thinking about a whole lot to answer that question. That's why your boy pausing right now. <laughs> but it, it, it was, um, you know, for me, it was like, when you look at social media, it really took a different approach. They, they took a different approach, starting around 15, 16, as far as getting video content and giving you time to express yourself. It all started out 30 seconds, then it went to a minute. So I think that right there alone really helped us kind of bridge the gap when we got into it to go out. You're going to have your own followers anyway, mm -hmm. but to really spread the message of understanding like how to be able to use social media from that aspect, because true, before that, you really didn't have an outlet. You know, mm -hmm. you had to rely on somebody else to share your story. Mm -hmm. But once they kind of social media took that turn towards that, that really, really kind of gave us the highway to, to own our way to heaven, I would like to say. Okay, I've heard that song quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, I think also we, um, for me, I, we both had a, a broadcast background. So we went to broadcast boot camp, mm -hmm. um, also broadcasting and co uh, covering college football, I should say, got our MBAs and Tequila had his book Behind the Mask. So when he had his book, um, we did a, a few, a tour in Atlanta, went to New York and, what we realized is that for us, for athletes, 
we use a mask for protection, right? Um, but in everyday walk, people have masks. You have your mask up, you have your guard up. Yeah. Right? Until there's a commonality or you feel comfortable enough to pull that mask down. So we walk in the room and I don't know you, you're probably not gonna talk off, you know, off top. But if you're like, oh, this is my guy, this is my man right here, you're like, oh, cool. You, you let that guard down, you let that mask down. So we wanna see who that person is. Yeah. The person that's cool enough to let you know who they really are behind the mask. You know, we, we're, we're guarded uh, being former players as it is, and, and, and the fans don't know. The audience doesn't know. So for me, I think it was a great concept for Tequil. Uh, he had his book, and then 2019, the pandemic, prior to the pandemic, we were like, you know what? Let's meet people where they're at. Podcast. Yeah. And you actually, we I, talked about yeah. it two years he, he prior. Shut down. He shut me down. And I was like, <laughs> man, down. I'm not doing no podcast. <laughs> At that time, I'm going to London, yeah. do, you know, holding down Sky Sports. Yeah. And I'm staying over there. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, being compensated well. Yeah. So I'm like, start a podcast, man. You're trying to break up my, <laughs> my schedule throughout the year. <laughs> so I kept, I kept doing research, kept hearing it. Yeah. And I was like, bro, let's do it. So we did it. And then the world stopped. Yeah. With yeah. the yeah. pandemic. Yeah. yeah. And and the thing about it that I appreciate is we no different than the game of football. You go up and down the adversity. We found a way to stay relevant yeah. Yeah. throughout that time period. Going back to 2015, 16, when I started seeing a shift in social media. So we utilized it, bro. And you know, that really helped connect. So where do y'all normally meet at? Where do y'all hold the podcast? Like, in, in Atlanta. In Atlanta, yeah. okay. Yeah. So we've had ours, ours kind of started the same way. Um, we've had, well, we're on our second season right now. Mm -hmm. We've had a, a slew of, of, of former players on the show. And we've traveled uh, draft, uh, combine, mm -hmm. owners meetings, Super Bowl. Like we, we've, we've done it all. And I have my version of a favorite guest I have. However long you guys have been doing yours, how, or excuse me, who has been one of your favorite guests that you've had on the podcast? Say it. First name that comes to mind. Who's right. your first name? All of them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, you sound like a parent now. Nah, no, you, you know what it is? It's, it's so hard to answer that because we don't just have football players or basketball players. Like, I immediately thought of, like, one person who I really appreciated because I did not know them was Layla Ali. Mm -hmm. And then to turn around and have a sit down with Carrie Hilson, and we, we ain't talking about no sports at all, but mm -hmm. we just chopping it up about life. Yeah, yeah. She, she had a couple of great bangers back in oh, the day, yeah. too. Yeah, oh, yeah. And she, you know, and so, she coming back, too. Yeah, yeah she's doing her thing. Yeah, she's she doing her thing, man. But the connections that we have, and, and I'm fascinated by learning. I love learning. And just to hear other people's, you know, going through their adversity, and mm -hmm. it's no different than why I wrote the book Behind the Mask. Yeah. I wanted, it was about some of the greatest linebackers that played the game, and I wanted to share their story of how did they become great, what yeah. made them an outlier. So when we talk about guests, I look at her, I look at Lawrence Taylor mm -hmm. to be able to mm -hmm. bring him out of the shadows. And that was the, our podcast was the first one that he did. Yeah. And so for him to, to, to feel that way, I was like, wow. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. just a lot, man. Yeah. A lot that I take from it, from everybody. Absolutely. We had him the other day. and I, I think he's still, still a scary. bad mofo. Like he, oh, like, he was, yeah. He, <laughs> intimidating. I, yeah, I agree. Still. I, I don't think, I think he's the one NFL player. We walk around, you got gold jackets. Here at the, the yeah. Super Bowl, everybody's here. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, nobody f with him. Absolutely. It's like, Absolutely. he is just known like, uh Probably not. Go, I ain't barking up that tree. He won speed all day. <laughs> all day. <laughs> Same thing when we had him on, on the show. And um, the funniest part about that, I think we had our, our audio engineer was was micing him up. So, you know, you have the lapel mic. You got to go through. Remember that? <laughs> you got to go through the shirt. But he was so nervous because it's Lawrence Taylor. He's sitting there shaking. And he's like, uh, he just drops <laughs> it in his lap. And LT's like, y'all paying this guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, his... The intimidation that he still has, even in the conversation, just yes. speaks of his greatness, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. you know, okay, he's an older guy now. You know what I mean? He's, what, what 60-something, maybe? Just turned 65. 65. Yeah. yeah, 65. And you're like, all right, if I if I had to, I probably could take him if I had to, right? A younger guy. But you're like, I'm not even going to try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. LT. Yeah. You know none of I mean? that smoke. None of that. <laughs> none of that. None of that. So, yeah, so let, me, let me ask you this. When you, when you wrote the book, what made you want to focus on linebackers? 
Why not quarterbacks, receivers, DBs, D linemen? Why linebackers? Well, it's uh, linebackers first because, like, that's that's what I know. Yeah, and you know, and so it was like from a business aspect, like, why not? Uh, I got all of the connections. I can reach out and touch damn near everybody. Yeah. So for me, I felt like I wanted people to see it through our lens, how we see the game and play the game. We consider ourselves the best athletes on the field. What? I'm sure you gentlemen of you I'm sure you're gonna disagree. What? You're and you definitely you're, been you're not saying that. The only person no, that says no, that. No, nobody else thinks because, that. Because, nobody else thinks that. Because we has to we have to play the run, the pass. Yeah. So does everybody else on defense. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, gotta be defense. I think it's offensive linemen. We never come off the field. You guys can sit there and tell me. Time out, time out, time out. The DBs never come off the field either. Yeah, I do come with the field. DBs and linebackers are the ones that don't come don't off the field. They have dime packages and nickel yeah, packages. That's, and stuff. that's more DBs. That's. Yeah. <laughs> you got a backer out there. You yeah, by I yourself on this one. <laughs> now, you talking about rushers. Okay, man. What you said? Because this guy here. <laughs> so, but I, I like. First of all, I, I figured you would say that. Look, I, I've always been intrigued by the linebacker position, even going as far back as, you know, watching guys like Mike Singletary mm. with the crazy eyes. Yeah. And so, the deaf uh, yeah, it's for me, I would like to know this, though, Tequil, because I've been told a couple of times I got a big neck. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> you have a ginormous neck. All right. <laughs> it, and I always also tell people, I was like, it's because my head is kind of skinny. Your head's kind of skinny too. <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah, are our necks really that much bigger? And, or is it the head a little bit skinnier? And then, and then also, I mean, the motivation behind it, where comes the motive? Cause I, I've read this, I did a little research on it. I want to know if that part is true. They were like, why did you focus on trying to get a big neck? Did you, you say you read about it, right? I did. I'm, I'm, I'm not not sure I want. The people want to know. The people want to know. I don't know why. Why did you want to focus on having a big neck? But it was. It, was, seeing it wasn't. It wasn't even so much about having a big neck. Not. Not majority of it. Okay. All right. Let's put it to bed right here. Okay. So <laughs> my high school coach told me he was like, "Look, hey man, you know you working your neck muscles. You know that have reduced the risk of you having concussions." And so I'm like, "Cool." So I'm doing neck exercise, putting a 45 pound plate on my head, leaning off the bench, bringing it here to my sternum. And, I, and that was an upright rolls. Every day I'm doing that, bro. Every day. So I never had any, you know, like in my earlier years, like I never had no shoulder problems, not even like, like head problems at that time. So for me, man, it was, um, it was about protection. And then the other part of it too was, I just feel like as a linebacker, you got to have some type of look about you. Like, I don't really respect linebacker. They come in with a skinny neck. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. Same way how you look at them receivers and you be like, oh, his dress cold off. Yeah. I'm with Ain't you. no way you going to catch a ball on me. No gloves? I'm like, bro, it's, uh, it's, he's so trash. No swag. Yeah, so like, that's Zero why, bro, swag. like, I just, like, I'm on, I'm on fit to look. I'm yeah. going to do that. I like that. I that's, like that. I didn't know that, but. And I, for volume two, we don't have. Defensive backs behind the mask. Okay, I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. gonna give you my phone number. I'll be the first one. I already you know. got it. Yeah, yeah. So let me. Here's here's just something else that I think the three of us have in common. We all have um, master's degrees. And um, <laughs> wow, I didn't say any names. That's why I didn't. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> say that school up north. Okay, I just I just didn't in say the state any of names. Alabama. Yeah, I didn't say no names. But anyway, um, I want to know why y'all chose the University of Miami. And how does that university tailor their program toward uh, athletes? Fill in the gaps for me. It's a lot yeah, on this true. story. Uh, we basically we took advantage of, I mean, what we had the NFL player benefits. Yeah. Um, I actually went back to school and got my undergrad first because I heard about that was coming from him and another one of my best friends, Carlos Simmons, and they was talking about. Hey man, we're going to get our masters and we can use the the benefits to be able to pay for it. And so I'm like, man. And so I just, that was the first time out of a lot of conversations we had, I felt like, like y'all think y'all better than me right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was like, it's not I about, it ain't about the paper. It ain't, no. It ain't about the paper. Pure competition. Pure competition. <laughs> competition. <laughs> y'all think y'all better that than me. So <laughs> then they just excluded me and kind of like turned yeah. their shoulder. I'm like, what? We were in the group text. We didn't, we didn't uh, sign up. Me and Carlos signed up. 
Zakia was like hesitant. He was like, shit, we just gonna do it. So we signed up. And next thing you know, he's like, y'all signed up? He's like, yeah. It's too late. <laughs> so he, he got his paperwork in and stuff, and then he's like, "Y'all not gonna go get, uh, y'all not gonna get one up on me." You know, I, I mean? wasn't gonna let him hold yeah. one up. And I think yeah. it speaks of, it speaks volumes about who we are. And when I say we, I don't just say us. Like all of us, we always need that competitive spirit, yeah, and to be yeah. able to talk to each other and 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 drive you. Because I had no intentions of right. going back to school <laughs> right. at all. And you know, when my mama, she was glad about it. And she was like, I just love them boys. <laughs> it's like, she, used to, she used to try to tell me like, you, you, well, you better take your black ass back to school. <laughs> and, get them papers. and I'm like, mom, we gonna be rich. <laughs> yeah, but you still need to learn how to manage it. I said, well, I figured that out. <laughs> but, but to be completely honest with you, one of the best decisions I've yeah. ever made in my life. Yeah. Just because it taught me a new way to think. Mm -hmm. It taught me to be able to respect other people's background and their thought process to see what's important to them culturally when you just see, when we in the classroom with people from India, from, you know, we had other athletes in there too yeah. as well. So it was just a diverse background, but to be able to listen and learn, that was cool for me. And these people are smart people and the way yeah, they absolutely. think and the way you're presenting, that, that you got to, Look, when you're in a room of smart people, you're naturally going to get smarter because yeah. things are going to be said yeah. that like, he's like, man, I didn't think about that. Yeah. yeah. And so what was probably one of the more interesting. Wait, time out, time out, Roku. Before you ask that. Yes. I'm, I'm going to go back and get my, my MBA. What's up? Let's do it right now. No. Let's do it. Competitive. This is your moment, no. Roman. No. This competitive. Is your competitive. Moment. Let's do it. I'm not that competitive. Come like, on. No. Let's do it. That's BS. No, Let's, come on. Dude. That's the, Cap. Come on. The, he I'm capping, fine, man. You fine? I'm fine. I got an A club ring. <laughs> we all, you know what? We all thought <laughs> that we, I don't have. <laughs> yeah, you do not. The same thing. We felt like you know what? We you know went to college. It's, it's cool. Went to the NFL. Obviously, the top of the top and one percent and all of that. But then it was like when we all retire or we all done playing ball, you still have that competitive uh, something. You need something to fuel that competitive edge, right? So this was that thing, and it was what fifteen something years later from when we played ball. But now because Carlos, myself, and other athletes, we all went. We still had the camaraderie of the mm. locker room. We still had brothers to lean on when we didn't understand a certain topic. I'm talking about, what, eight-hour days, study hall. Hey, man. That's it was, it was, you had to relearn how to learn. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Tough. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah. it, was, it was like scar tissue being broken. This was going to be my question. Mind. It was like, these, the things that I, this is what I wanted to know. Yeah. The things that, that you thought has probably changed you or you didn't even understand what's going to be. So relearning how to learn. Relearning how to learn. Like learning how to study again. Because I've studied a playbook. Yeah. I went from studying books right. to like a playbook. And now I'm trying to get all these things to now be ready to study for a test. It sounds yeah. like so much fun. We got to do it. It was fun though. <clears throat> And I think I think the, the coolest thing though is when you have to like present in front of your class. Oh yeah! Like as as athletes, we cool with going out balling in front of seventy thousand people, but you got to sit in front of a class of fifty people and talk. When I tell you them nerves be racking, Carlos was up there sweating. Right? Yeah. <laughs> sweating bullets. <laughs> sweating bullets. We, we, we had a side bet. Hey, how many seconds you think before we start leaking up there? <laughs> but it was dope, man. And again, you holding each other accountable and no one was still above the other. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. he didn't want to look on, look on our LinkedIn and see it say Tucson Camarillo's NBA and his not say that. How long was the process? It was a year and a half. year and a half, two yeah. years. It was in the yeah, second like, NBA. Yeah, two years. Yeah, yeah. Two years. Like, two so years. it was in person or was it uh, both online? Both online. Person. Yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah. They, they catered it around uh, the NFL season. So we would go during the off season in class. Yeah down to Miami. And then when the guys had mini camp, training camp, cause there was still some active players there. Yeah. Uh, Tory Smith, so, Carlos, yeah, Carlos Dunlap, Dunlap. Uh, some other guys. Um, Mike. Yeah. Will My Smith, boy Jari Evan went Will back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Will got Jari to yeah. go back. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, I remember this very vividly. Um, the thing I will talk about though is, I'm gonna brag on myself a little bit is the Keo working with the SEC network. Could you talk about getting into that? Wait, Tom, how did you get that job? Like that's that's, that's what I don't know. How did you work? I know you were SEC Network. I I never heard of him. Well, but, uh, on his interview, he crushed it. But I, I was over there feeding him assist. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Really, just and I think I was able to share. And I, I we've never done a show together. 
and it was just really cool to like, you know, know him as a person, as a great player in the NFL for all these years. And now he's back talking college football and he does a great job of that. But it's also like really cool because it was like, man, like I had this guy's back and I, I love seeing him there. And I just wanted him to be more calm. And I think yeah. just having me there, it was just like, oh, OK. Yeah, I appreciate that, too, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I was going to acknowledge that because it's the little things in life. And so that was huge for me because like that was the first time me coming up there. So yeah. I was like, let me. And I was like, you don't know who's going to be interviewing you. And then when I saw you was coming and it was intentional, yeah. I was like, my boy, no, I, I treat everything like, like the national anthem just played, bro. Like, I'm ready to go get it. You know what I'm saying? But no, nah, it, it really helped me, though. And you so, and what, two years later now, yeah. we, we still rocking and rolling. Yeah, man. How have you, how have you enjoyed doing live TV? Because I don't think people understand doing live TV versus a little stress. Re recorded TV. Uh, how have you enjoy that? What mm -hmm. are some of the things that you uh, have that you didn't know before that you know now? And then maybe kind of talk about the show you do to listen Lang on Wednesdays. Yeah, so um, super dope. First year I did every game on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Like I can't look at the game and just say, oh, man, Tennessee, they couldn't stop the run. It's so generic, watered down. And so that's what I had to learn how to do mm -hmm. on live TV. But this is the kicker. You'd be like, oh, all right, that's easy. You can do that. You gotta be concise. Yeah, man. that part. <laughs> and you got 10 games <laughs> on at one time. <laughs> and so, bro, we had to relearn how to learn again. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, but by mid season, I really caught my stride. That went well. Got them reps. Got the yeah. reps, man. It's all about getting the reps. That gave me more confidence. You know, and every every week I'm I'm tweaking the, the schedule as far as timing and everything, trying to make sure I'm I'm ready for Saturday. Year two, which was this past year, live TV, I, I still do it, love it. I love having my own show. So yeah. they were uh ESPN saw fit to it. Say, hey, you want the opportunity to have your own show? It will be called out of pocket. And I was like, well. Not really my own show then, if you're telling me what it is. <laughs> nah, no, nah, but uh, no, nah, I didn't but get I was, to pick and choose my name for my show. That's on right. that's, I guess that's what happened. <laughs> but no, nah, I was like, I'm down. Boom. Yeah. So get in, and it's a lifestyle reality, I, not a reality, but a lifestyle athletic sports show. And myself, Alyssa Lang, lover to death, like I knew she knew football just from looking at the network, but to sit down with her, she went into depth, detail. And I'm talking about like Mina Kimes, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she like, know it. Like I respect Mina Kimes, her analysis. So when I, when I sat down beside Alyssa Lang, I was like, man, we hit it off. Yeah. And I actually did my first show with her. So that's what gave me a level of comfortability too as well. But we hit it off. We have, it's almost the same as what we're doing here on Out of Pocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll go back and look at the weeks and see what players probably got, maybe got stiffed armed or something. We make fun in light of it to where it's not a heavy football show. And then we have fun, we laugh, but then also we have certain segments to where, okay, now I, let's, let's look at this fourth and 31 over here and see what happened at Auburn and why they gave that up. You know what I mean? So it's a good mixture. And for me, I thought it was a perfect balance for me. So as far as live TV and the show I have now, love it, man. Looking forward to doing it again. What do you think about or let me let me say it like this. What do you like about the podcast versus TV? For me, um, when I I, bro, I did some broadcasting with covering college football t as well. Um, for me, I like the podcast because it's even more auth authentic, mm -hmm. right? Um, with our guests, with our, with obviously myself and Tequil, you get the real interaction, right? So live TV. When he broadcast in the studio, you know, the studio panel, obviously. In a game, when I cover uh, college football, you like the game. But if I'm covering it, the, the game, excuse me, and it's a blowout going on, you get bored. So sure. when he was covering, remember, there was times we would text each other when he was broadcasting with, back another uh, network and I was covering ball. It was like, this is boring, man. You know what I mean? As, for, as former athletes, we know good football. Right. So you see bad football, kind of got to get charged up. But for me, the podcast, which I guess you always charged up because there's always something, there's always a nugget, there's always 
now a clip that's going to go viral. It's something that you're going to find out from your from your guests that you're like, you know what? That's our touchdown. When he says it in the back of our, our mind, we sitting there like, this is it. You know what I mean? Oh, we you got feel gold. That we got it. We got gold. And for me, I that's like what that. I like we about. got so, gold. So is is my follow up is is that the most gratifying part of the podcast for you guys personally? Is like getting that that clip and like, oh, that was it. Is that the most gratifying or is it just no. letting people tell their story no. or for me it's letting people tell their story. Yeah. Right. Because you got guys like we had a uh, John Abraham on. People yeah. haven't heard from him for years. Uh, yeah. Jamal Lewis. People haven't heard from him for years. LT, like Takeo said, Charles Barkley, uh, Eric Dickinson, some of the legends. Right. The most gratifying part is when the, 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 the interview is over, the episode is over. And they're like, you know what? I appreciated that. Because yeah. I never mm. would have had this conversation with anybody else but I felt like I was back in the locker room. It felt good, it felt natural. It didn't feel like an interview, like right. a media interview. It felt like I was chopping it up with my boys. And I'm like, yo, that's what it is. And we got guys that cry, Kerry Hilson cried, John yep. cried, hell, I cried. He cried. I just cried, you know what I mean? So when when you have that, that authentic, vulnerable space, but you mm -hmm. still feel, you find comfort, comfortability in being vulnerable yeah. amongst yeah. your peers, that's the most gratifying part. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Because we're not gonna take your story and spin it like some media just to get a clip. No, no, no. Right. We're going to tell a story like you want it told because yeah. you're the author of your own autobiography. It's yeah. your narrative. How you want it yeah. perceived, that's how it's going to be perceived. So that's- Rome literally cries every every yeah. podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do. It, well, because I cry when I laugh. So every, <laughs> you know I mean? every, 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 every podcast he cries. All the time. He'd be like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know how the ladies, they, 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 Right, right. Yeah, I do that yeah. all the time. Oh. Yeah, all the time. No, every every, no, every episode he cries. So no, yeah, it's I, real, I, though. I feel that. Yeah, it's real. And you know, as we alpha males, man, you know, you don't want to you don't want to show your vulnerability all the time because it's perceived as weakness. Yep, nah, it's real. No, I saw the John it's Abraham uh, Abraham uh, yeah. podcast, and it, that was that was a powerful one. It was real. It was so real, yep. and the whole suffering in silence. And yeah. I, I I commend you too for giving him a safe space and pouring into him and letting him pour into y'all with, with what he was going through at that time. Cause when he said those things, yeah. it, it, it was just like, what did I, did I just hear that? Right. Mm -hmm. And at the time when, you know, he was playing, he was that dude in Atlanta. Beast. And then I just remember them flamboyant tattoos, not flamboyant, but like very bright tattoos. Mm -hmm. You could just see it from the sideline. Yeah. <laughs> I just was, I, I don't know, man. I y'all, y'all did a hell of a job on, on, on that interview with him. So I just want to say, yo, that was that was a that was a dope interview. Didn't even have any idea it was gonna go that way. Mm -hmm. That's that's the other part I like about I love live TV, but I also love the podcast probably a little more because it's the unexpected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we had to shut down shop. And, you know, because this dude here was just hard headed. <laughs> hey man, I, I feel something. I feel, like, yeah. feel a little tightness, you know. And after like a couple of weeks, he was like, "Hey man, why don't you just go get checked out, bro?" Now what he didn't say was he had a um, limp. It was a lump. Yeah, yeah. My been my groin. Lump in his groin. We kept myself, Carlos Simmons. He got to a point. What a year and a half later. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a year, a little bit over a year. May he went to the doctor, found out he had lymphoma, and. Like it was, oh, wow! It like totally can't curse on here, but he y'all don't want me to curse. I was fucked up, bro. Yeah. yeah, like I was. I when he called me, I was like, I couldn't even breathe, bro. Yeah. And I, I said, keep it together, kept it together for him. And uh, he actually knew when we came out here. Well, not here, but at Super Bowl last year. I was like, you sure you want to do this? He was like, yeah, I wanted, I got it. He was like, I need to do it. Because it was time, I was like, man, we just don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. But um, going back to the storytelling to John Abraham, you know, to hear him share his story on why he came out and decided to do it, because this was a lot of people who thought he's still close to them, but they, they felt offended because he didn't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. He didn't want that emotional trauma to follow him. And so... To be able to to look at what we do totality wise, that's what makes me love doing the podcast sector so much. Getting those stories and and him just being a man about it 
and shedding light on it for all of us to know so that, look, guys, man, I know we tough and I like to play dumb tough. And I listen, I'd say it all. But at the end of the day, you got to get checked. You can't pour from no empty cup. And Mm -hmm. if you ain't right, ain't nobody right. True. Preaching quote right there. I mean, Takeo, man, he, you know, he's from the South, bro. That ain't yeah. Good. I mean, so <laughs> Mama Spikes ain't playing, bro. <laughs> hey, girl. Mama Spikes ain't proud, bro. Shabana no sky. <laughs> so, so this, I, I see, it feels like you guys have really found your lane in this whole podcast space. And it starts because you guys genuinely care about each other. Clearly, we can see that. And so as this thing continues to roll down the interstate highway, how do you continue to expand? Like, what is next? And because I know that's how most of us are wired. It's like, all right, once I get here, it's like, you know, getting to the league was the goal. Then when you get there, like, how do I get to a Pro Bowl? Or how do I get paid? Or how do, like, what's the next? And so as this lane continues to roll on for you guys, I want to know what's next in you guys' minds. Um, it's, it's, it's two part. I'll start first. The... The you already thing. started first. <laughs> well, maybe because it was my idea first. You know, right? And stop crying. <laughs> I will. And I, I think it's, uh, you know, continue to make bigger and meaningful sponsorships to be able to become syndicated on a bigger platform. Okay. Uh, to be able to leverage those partnerships and do some meaningful things have meaningful conversations as we go around the country. You know, so for me, that's the big thing is just making sure that we continue to grow, scale as much as we can, Yeah, you know, and, you know, and everything else to take care of itself from that part. Yeah. And I think the the dopest part is it's not just a podcast, it's a media company behind the mass media. So from going to um, broadcast boot camp, from getting our MBAs, we are like, all right, like to your point earlier, anybody could do a podcast, right? Own the whole building. Own the whole building. <laughs> Own your content. Yes. As opposed to sitting there and saying, okay, we want to just be on this pa- platform. It's like, nah, mm. you know what? This doesn't seem right. We'll license it to you. Yeah. You know, you're just not just going to have our stuff sitting up there. Like, like let's make this a business partnership, a deal. Like, you're not, we're not going to work for you. We'll, we'll work with you. And also telling, continuing to tell the stories, particularly from my guys, right? Because there's so many people that tell us like, you know what? I didn't know you were going through that, but I appreciate you talking about it because I was going through it too. Yeah. I had these same thoughts of what life after football is like. I had these same thoughts of, you know, possible suicide or I had something going on with my health, but I didn't check it. But because you checked your health and you were vulnerable and shared that, I went to the doctor too. So now I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. again, like Takio said, a, a year, that was a dumb freaking year. It took him and Carlos cursing me out, saying what is wrong with you. Just get your shit checked. You know what I mean? And when I finally did and find out like something was really going on, if it wasn't for my brothers checking me, yeah, I probably still, it would have been another year. And then it went from, as opposed to stage two, stage three or four, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So being that voice for the brotherhood, for the brothers that feel like they don't have a voice, yeah, but they, they got ears, they can still hear it, they can listen, they can feel it. You know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. that resonates in wherever they're at in their lives. So I think that's the, the thing for me. And I was like, Takiel said, just continue to scale the business and, and growing it as large as we possibly can and, and taking it as far as this thing can go. Yep. I mean, it, it's enough, it's enough. If it's the money's the goal, there's enough money out there for everybody. Yeah, Like you said, everybody's, you know, a lot of people are doing podcasts, but bro, it's, it's you have a different story. You got a different story. Right. I have a different story. I, this guy's story, he, he hated me because I was from New York until he got cool with me. He's like, all right, now nah, I like him. It's a different story. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I ain't trust cats from New York. I don't blame you, dog. Me neither. <laughs> Growing up, like, nah, they, they talk too fast. Come yeah. on, man. Come <laughs> on, and you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, man, just continue to, to, to share these stories. I think that's the most important thing because otherwise, you know, Alpha Males, we holding it in. Yeah. We're not letting it out. So we have a space where we can let it out and be comfortable letting it out because we know that we're not going to judge each other. Mm-hmm. That's an amazing feeling. Yeah, so we're all four of us in this room. We're that, what, top less than 1% to make it to the NFL. We've had success on the field, success off the field. Clearly, you guys, bachelor's degrees, MBAs. Shout out to us. Shout out to us three over here. (laughs) 
I want to. <laughs> that's a hard line right there. You just drew the key up. It's a real hard line right there, dog. What I what I really want to know is um, four people of around of four people on Mount Rushmore. Who would you put on that on that? Four people. Who would you put on Mount Rushmore to help you get to where you are right now? Uh, Two times you go first. God damn. <laughs> my mother. Okay. Um, obviously, that's my rock. Um, my son. Yeah. Because he's my firstborn, and I knew when I got to the league, that was my motivation. I say my grandmother, because she told me when I was young, I said, she said, what do you want to do? I said, I want to go to the NFL, play football professionally. She's like, just do it. It's not that easy, Grammy. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just do it. You want to do it, do it. And um, that stuck with me in terms of how I approach life. I feel I can do anything. Ah. Uh, Baby girl. Baby yeah. girl. Cause like my for me, my kids are the are the, the people that to you to motivate me. Mm -hmm. So when I feel like I want to give up, it's like, nah, I can't give up. When I feel like I this ain't gonna be right, nah, you're doing it for something bigger than yourself. So for me it's it's, it's family, you know what I mean? And shout out to every obviously coaches and people that have a Tell me along the lines, but definitely for me, my my family. So. Yeah, yeah, man. It's somewhat of the same thing. Like I, I get more specific. My mother, father, they. My father introduced me to the game. He's passed now. Mm -hmm. Um, he introduced me to the game. Taught me how to be a man and and how to carry yourself. Uh, my mother, like the all the fire inside of me. Like I get it from her, you know, she calls it a controlled aggression. I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you know, so uh, those two definitely, man, for kind of carving me out into the man who I am. I would also say um, my high school coach, his entire staff, but him coming with the vision to a small rural town and making you believe that you can be whatever you want to achieve. And um, and I, I, him, and then lastly, I would say my daughter, you know, love that little joker, man. Love her. Yeah. Like she's shown me it's a different side. It's like it's a totally different side that always keeps me evolving. And I feel like that's what keeps me young. Not saying that I need more, <laughs> but it's just, you know how it is dealing with women. You know, they just, they be sometimes, then they be here and then they love on you. And then, you know, it's just a different yeah. mix array of, of emotions. But she's taught me how, I'm like, all right, sit down and listen to her. It made me also realize how much I probably didn't listen before her. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But we don't say this for the podcast. <laughs> we'll say we'll say but out of, out of those four, those four people, they've been very instrumental. So they would definitely be on my round, Mountain Rushmore. That's beautiful. Fellas, we appreciate y'all, man, coming on the podcast. This is dope. Yeah, this, man. This was kind of behind the mask. This, yeah. this like, is really behind yeah. the mask. Listen, man, we appreciate y'all having it. it. Took long enough. I mean, you know what I mean? Y'all doing y'all. Yeah, man. We man. seen y'all last year. You know what I mean? We crossed paths. Now we we together. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate Synergies. that. That's it, man. I, I like it. I like man. it. So whenever y'all want us to come through, like or, or the the NBA crew, <clears throat> yeah, I can. <laughs> I'm going back. I think I'm gonna do it. I'm I, no no cap, no bullshit. Like I, I'm like, hey, wait. All y'all was like, yo, I got a masters, but I ain't got no NBA. Like I'm, I'm thinking about Rome. I'm gonna keep, yeah. I'm gonna keep pouring into you, boss. You should do it, man. You should, we, should be <laughs> gonna do it. <laughs> you should do it. I like that for you. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, bro? You're gonna be great. <laughs> You're going to be great. All right, man, let's get up out of here, man. All of our listeners and viewers, thank you, man. This has been another special one from between Tootin and, and Takio, man. Y'all go check them out at Behind the Mask. They do great things on their pod, man. And you can check them out on YouTube. They're on, they're on social media, Instagram, and all of those things. So y'all please go check them out. Support, man, because this is what this whole thing is really is about. Us brothers as former NFL players, this fraternity, leaning on each other, loving one another, understanding that these talks, we got to continue to have them. Uh, these are free spaces, open spaces to really open up 
and can talk about these things that we normally don't ever talk about. So thank you for that, man. And all of our listeners, viewers, make sure you give us a five star rating. Uh, give us a follow. Uh, click like, comment and share. Thank you so much for that, man. And uh, hey, wherever you listen to your podcast, what is it? Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio. Please tell a friend to tell a friend to do what, Peanut? Tell a friend. All right, man, get us up. Hey, I'm Peanut with the NFL Players Second Acts Podcast, and that's behind the mask in their podcast. Go check them out. We out, fellas and ladies.